welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this picture and text effect with this pop-out sort of text added onto it. Um, I've got the Denver Capitol building here, and then I've got some Denver lettering as well. Before I get started, real quick, I just want to show you guys my website, daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials. You can see GIMP video and text tutorials on here, and you can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher and I'll have uh, those links as well as links to my social media in the description of this video. So the photo we're going to be using today is from Flickr and it is by Ken Lund and this is of the Denver um, of the Colorado State Capitol here in Denver, Colorado and you can come over here and click download and download this for free. You've got the large original um, and other sizes here. I just downloaded the large size for today's tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and once you've downloaded that, go ahead and go to File New to create a new image or a new composition and I went with 1020 by 720 and that's because this image is about 1020 in width and uh, I just chose 720 because you know the standard is 1280 by 720. But feel free to do whatever image size you want. So click OK. Alright, so once you have this new composition created, the first thing I want to do is grab my blend tool and I'm going to create a gradient for the background here. I've chosen like a dark blue, almost teal color for uh, my foreground color. You can copy this HTML notation here, click OK, and then for the background color, I'm going to choose this light blue. Again, you can copy the HTML notation here, click OK. And I have the gradient set to foreground and background RGB, and the shape is set to radial. And then I'm going to find the uh, center of the image here and just click and drag out. And I'm using GIMP 2.9.8, which is the newest version of GIMP. It's called the development version. Uh, but in this version, you can uh, click and drag this gradient so you can basically live edit the gradient. Um, if you're using an older version of GIMP, you'll just have to click and drag and uh, just kind of keep doing it until you get uh, the gradient in the position you like. Otherwise, you can just drag the point here if you're using GIMP 2.9.8 and uh, set this where you want it. So I like that position right there. The next thing I'm going to do is grab my text tool and I have my font set to Advent Pro Bold. That's a free font I downloaded and I'll include that link in the description. But you can click on this font box here and uh, scroll through the fonts that you want to use and choose your font. And then I'll have my size set to 395 and I'm going to change the color to white and click OK. And then I'm going to just click within uh, the composition here and with my caps lock key engaged, I'm going to type Denver. And then I'm going to select this text because I do want the text to be a little bit more, uh, you know, squished together, a little less spaced apart. So I'm going to highlight this and um, this is my kerning and I'm actually just going to use the arrows here to decrease the kerning until I get it where I want it. And as you can see, our letters are a little less spaced apart now. Uh, but one thing that arises when we do this is that the uh, letter over here kind of comes off of the text box, so it gets cut off here. And so to remedy that, I can uh, click on these ends here and I can drag the ends out until that D comes back in. Now one thing you'll notice is that um, the left side of this text box here, there's more, there's less space, sorry, on this left side than on this right side. So basically that kind of rules out using the alignment tool to uh, vertically align this to the center of the composition. But we can still grab the alignment tool, click on the text, and uh, click align middle of target to align this to the middle of the image. And then we're going to have to eyeball the rest um, using the move tool and just kind of go until we get to relative center here. All right, and that looks good enough for me. So once you've done that, you can go to Layer, Layer to Image Size, and that changes the boundary of your layer to the boundary of the image. So once we've done that, we want to go ahead and bring in our um, photo here of the Denver Capitol. So I'm going to hit Control-C, then come over here to our original composition. And by the way, if you don't have this open, you can go to File, Open, and you can find uh, this file on your computer to open it in GIMP. Or you can just click and drag the file from your computer into this little area and that'll actually bring it into GIMP as well. So I hit Control C over here to copy this or you can go to Edit Copy and then I'm going to hit Control V on my keyboard or go to Edit Paste to paste this in here. And that'll paste it as a floating selection layer. 
um, but we want to make this a pasted layer. So to do that, we're going to make sure we're clicked on that floating selection layer and then click create a new layer. And then now we have this as its own uh, pasted layer. So I'm going to double click this to change the name to capital. And I had my caps lock on, so I'll just redo that. And now what I want to do is color correct this image real quick. So to do that, I'll go to colors and I'm actually just going to uh, increase the brightness and the contrast on here. It's already a pretty good photo, so we don't really need to do too much, but I just want this to stand out a little better. Click OK. We can also adjust the levels a little bit if we need to. And you can hit the split view um, checkbox here if you want to see it before and after. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go to Filters, Enhance, Unsharp Mask, and I'm just going to um, sharpen this image a little bit. And I like the settings as they are now. And again, you can hit the split view if you want to see before and after and click OK. All right, so once you've edited your image, the next thing we want to do is duplicate this three times. And then I want to duplicate my text layer at least one time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that duplicate key. All right, so the next step, I'm going to hide uh, one of my text layers here, and I'm going to hide um, two of the capital layers here. And I'm just going to go to Layer, Transparency, Alpha to Selection while I'm on this top text layer. And that's going to create a selection area around my text. Then I'll go to Select Invert and click on that capital um, copy layer and then hit the delete key and that's going to delete everything outside the uh, Denver lettering there then go to select none and you can hide that lettering and now you can see that we've got an outline or uh, we've got a picture in text here with the Denver text and the capital picture. So the next thing I want to do is unhide the uh, text again, hide that capital copy layer, uh, the copy number one layer which I'm just going to name this capital copy three real quick so it's a little easier and then name this capital two. And so I'll unhide the capital two layer. And what I want to do now is create a layer mask on this layer because I'm going to uh, erase everything that isn't this um, dome of the Capitol building. So I'll right click and go to add layer mask and make sure initialize layer mask two is set to white full opacity and click add. And now we have a layer mask over here and I'm going to grab my brush tool, change the color to black, the foreground color and you can increase the size of your brush here. I have a hard brush uh, it's set to 100 hardness and uh, that's just because I, I don't really need a soft brush for this. So now what I'm going to do is uh, this is called non-destructive editing and what I'm doing is I'm using my paintbrush tool to erase the background of the image here and by using a layer mask instead of the eraser tool this allows me to if I make any mistakes I can paint um, some of the photo back on using the white color on this layer mask. And so I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard to decrease the size of the brush here so I can control Z, undo, um, get into some of the more detailed parts of this photo. And I'm erasing everything except for the only parts I'm keeping of this are um, this part that comes into the end here and then everything sort of from this dome here around. So this is the only part I'm keeping and I'm just painting over the rest so we can paint over that right there and then you can paint over all of this and then I'm going to grab my zoom tool and click and drag to highlight this area to zoom in on it and I can zoom in a little more grab my brush again and decrease the size with the bracket keys so that we can get into some of the more detailed parts here So we'll grab the zoom tool and hold control and uh, check on our progress here. And there's a few spots towards the top that I need to take care of. Um, but for the purposes of this tutorial and uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to uh, leave the rest as is. I think it looks pretty good. So come up here to the top and clean some of this up. Grab my zoom tool, zoom out again. And uh, again, just for the sake of time, I think that's going to be good enough. So now we can hide um, that main text 
And you can see some of this is a little wonky behind here, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be hidden. Uh, we can unhide the uh, first Denver picture and text layer that we did. And as you can see, we've already got this cool effect where this is popping out of the Denver text here. And uh, the more time you spend on the details uh, around erasing around the edges of this dome, the better it's going to look, obviously. But now you can unhide that original capital um, photo layer and go ahead and decrease the opacity of that by um, sliding the opacity slider here and just decrease it so that uh, basically this looks like an overlay. This blue uh, background that we created looks like sort of an overlay on top of the original image, which creates a really cool effect. So now we're going to come over here to our capital three layer, which is our Denver picture in text. And you can go ahead and rename this Denver pick in text. And we're going to come over here to filters, light and shadow, and choose drop shadow. And what this is going to do is put a drop shadow around our uh, Denver text here, which is going to create a pretty cool effect. And so I have the X and Y here uh, currently set to zero. And I have the blur radius set to about 20 and the opacity to about 0.721. Feel free to adjust this. Um, I'll turn the blur radius down a little bit to around 11. And go ahead and click OK. And then you can um, go ahead and grab your eraser tool here and increase the size of the eraser. And I'm just going to erase. I don't know if you guys noticed, but when I applied that drop shadow, it kind of uh, put some of it on the outer edges of the image here, and that's not really what I want. So I'm just deleting that drop shadow around the outside of my image. Then I'll grab my Move tool. All right, so now what I want to do is come over here to my Capital 2 layer, and the next step is I want this Capital Dome to be on its own layer. Right now it is. it looks like it's its own object, but it's not. It's uh, it's got a layer mask that's masking um, this larger photo here, but I need this to be its own cutout shape. And so to accomplish that, I'm going to come over here to my layer mask, right click on it, and go to mask to selection. And that'll create a selection around the dome. And then I'll come back over here to the uh, original photo and hit control C and then just hit control V. And that's going to paste the uh, dome, as you can see, as its own floating selection there. And so I'll go ahead and put this on its own layer and rename this dome. And if I hide that mask that we created earlier, you'll see the dome is still here. And now it's on its own layer. And so now what I can do with this dome on its own layer is I can come over to Filters, Light and Shadow, Drop Shadow. And now this dome has its own drop shadow, which um, is sort of a continuation of the drop shadow we did for the Denver text here. And so I'm going to keep the settings the same and click OK. All right, so once we've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is put a border around uh, the text here. And what I did with the original was kind of a lighter border, but what I'm going to do for this one is more of a gold border. I just think that looks a little better. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is come over here to my Denver Pick and Text layer and go to Layer, Transparency, Alpha to Selection, and that'll select our text. Then go to Select, Grow, and grow this by five. And then create a new layer. And you'll name this gold outline like I did here. And you can assign a color tag to this if you have a newer version of GIMP. Click OK. And now I'm going to come back to our Denver Pick and Text layer, go to Layer, Transparency, Subtract from Selection. And that's going to give us sort of a five pixel border around our text. Then come over here to our gold outline layer, grab your blend tool. And you're going to change the gradient to this golden gradient. It's a default gradient that comes with GIMP. Um, if you have a, an earlier version of GIMP, you might not have this specific golden one, but you should have a golden layer, uh, a golden gradient. And I'm going to click from the top left corner of the D here and drag to the bottom right corner. And we're going to replicate uh, the location of this gradient for the next gradient we're about to do. So keep that in mind. Uh, remember where you drew the start and end of your gradient, then go to Select None. And now we want to go ahead and repeat that for the dome. Um, so to do that, we're going to go to Layer, Transparency, Alpha to Selection, Select, Grow, make sure it's set to 5 pixels. Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and create a new layer and name this Dome Gold Outline. And again, give this a yellow tag. And now we're going to come back to our dome layer 
and go to layer, transparency, subtract from selection, and then make sure we're on this dome gold outline layer. Grab our gradient tool one more time, and we're going to click from the top corner of that D again to the bottom of the R, and that way these gradients are the same uh, between this gradient and this gradient. Then we'll grab the move tool to solidify that. Then we'll go to select none. And now our gradients should match up here. The only issue is that uh, this gold kind of goes along with the text and cuts through our capital building, which we don't want to happen. So we'll grab our uh, eraser tool here and just go ahead and erase wherever um, that gold outline intersects here. And you can erase some of that if you want. All right, so now that we have that finished, the last thing I want to do is go ahead and unhide one of these text layers. And I'm going to grab my free select tool here, and I'm going to make sure that it intersects um, with this bottom of the D, and it's going to come up here to the top of the R. And then we're just going to bring it around like that and connect it. Grab our move tool, and that's going to create a selection area around this top part here. Hit the delete key, then go to select none, and go ahead and Grab that layer and decrease the opacity a bit, and that's going to give it just a little bit of a uh, highlight there. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com slash tutorials, and you can see our social media links in the description along with the link to our Udemy photo editing course. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.